channel. Today we're going to be talking about cystinosis and this is my special guest. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> this is my sibling. Sister, yeah. <laughs> Basically, cystinosis is a lysosomal storage disease, so cysteine is an amino acid and normally it gets transferred out of the cell in the lysosome, but the lysosome in patients with cystinosis is broken. When cysteine needs to get out of the cell, it can't get out through the lysosome because it's broken, so it accumulates in the cell and mm. then after time, after it keeps accumulating, it starts to crystallise so all the different organs and muscles get affected by the crystals and the main organs that are affected are the eyes, the brain and the kidneys and also the muscles so patients with cystinosis have a kidney transplant Okay, this is Lucy's transplant scar and she just had, where's the point to the biopsy? Oh, mark there's my biopsy A biopsy, so that's where there's a little dot there and turn around. Right. Show your back scar. Why? Right. Why not? Because I'm just doing my kids with cystinosis. Yeah, but you can show people. I can't really see it though. And this is my this is her scar. scar. Very faded because it was ten, uh, uh, 10 years? No, 10 years next year. 10 years next year. 9 years in May. You can hardly see it. It goes all the way down to there, but for reasons I'm not going to pull my trousers down. <laughs> and also rickets as well. So a lot of children with cystinosis. When they're diagnosed young, they may have a feeding tube. Some children might even be in a wheelchair. It just it really varies. It's like a big spectrum. But um, I was diagnosed when I was three, and at the time, Lucy was about six months old, so she was diagnosed straight after. So basically, we got diagnosed um, by a doctor looking in her eyes because there are crystals in her eyes, and that means that we are very sensitive to bright lights, which means photophobia is the professional word. You were diagnosed a lot um, later than me, so you also worse your condition. Yeah, so when I was three, obviously the disease had already had three years to like progress without any um, medication. So I had a kidney transplant when I was 13. Lucy has just had her kidney transplant. Yeah, in October last year. Yeah. Very recent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Trauma of cystinosis. There's basically two at the moment. There's no current cure for cystinosis. But there is cystagon, which is a drug that slows down the effects of cystinosis at the crystallising, and cysteine eye drops, which help um, get rid of the crystals in the eyes. Uh, there is actually a cure being tested now, literally within mm. the past couple of months, which has only just become available for human testing. I think it's going on in America, but if it comes to England, then maybe I will myself for it too. Okay. Uh, this is our little Some cupboard. Yeah, storage. We cupboard. have a lot of medicine as you can see. What we're also is well for. stocking up because of Brexit. So and we're shortages. stocking up just in case. Yep. Um okay. That's hers, that's mine. Now we will show our little routine on how we get our morning tablets ready. This is my morning routine. I grab a little this is not really a bowl but <laughs> this is a cupcake case. And then here is where we keep our hacks. Everyday meds already. Yeah. And they're just like that's like storage and like so I have because I only recently have mine. I have a little. Sorry, my voice. So. She has no mate brain. So she has to get that. Um, just kidding. I do have a brain. So at the moment I am on Protacrolimus, which is a immunosuppressant that we have to take in the morning. I'm on sixteen. So I take three big capsules. I actually have a lot of these, so I'm going to come together one. <laughs> that, and I mean, that's, we have different strengths, and these are five, so we have three of them to make 15. And then we have one, one, which is level 16. Oh. <laughs> that's my first med. I take that before I eat, because I have to take it. And then, <coughs> I'm on MMF, which is something. I think you have, you have, you're not on it. No, I used to be. It's, but it's an anti rejection drug. I have taken forever, I think. Yeah, it's an anti rejection drug. And I used to be on a bigger dose, but I had some side effects. I've been, I've been on all three. So, I've been on tap, <coughs> MMF, and It was on three, I know I got lowered to one because my levels went down, and now I'm still on one. So that's my next one. Fuck um, life. Yeah. And then, and this is there, which is also a. Steroid. Steroid, and I'm on. I used to go to here on one now, and I should come off that. Yeah, I know. And 
country. I can't. And then I, so most of my meds, I'll come up with a few of them. Then Crotrexamol, which is something I only have on three days a week because it sucks. And that is for it prevents a certain type of infection, I can't remember what it's called, but it prevents infection. And then I crush it because I can't kick a hole, it's a bit big for me. How? Let me see. It's, it's not that big. Yeah, but for me so I cut it and then Monday, Wednesday, Friday, so I'm not going to do that right now, but I put in. And then my aspirin, which I take for to prevent blood clots, and you never was on that way. No. Because actually, apparently, we went to the doctor. You can't take aspirin. And apparently, it's really, they never used to do it, but apparently, the surgeon only gives it to you if they're really confident. <laughs> because I didn't start until I left the hospital. I thought you weren't supposed to take aspirin. No, because it does, it like, it makes them more bleed around the area, but that's apparently good. So, I sure, Jan. Okay. I was really confused, but I take that. I stopped it again because I um, had a biopsy and that you have to stop it from the bleeding, but I'm back on now. And then. Put that in that where it came um, from. I have some obviously for that. And then I have Carnotol, which isn't actually for the kidney transplant side, that's for my stenosis side, which is to help with swallowing because I have some issues with that. So, I just open one of these every single day. That's that. And that comes in like a big box, so I have one of them per day. And then Emeprazole, which is to help with reducing the amount of acid in the stomach and it also prevents stomach ulcers. Mm. What? Like that. Billy and then Bacaptamine, which is another name for Cystagon. Then we have Cystagon, which is what we said earlier, to help the cysteine slow down. And we have two strengths of that, which is... They're both the same, they're just one smaller. Yeah, different strengths. So 50s and 100s, and I take 100s and 50s and you just take uh, one piece in here. So I take two of them and then three little ones because that makes up one big one. Yep, and then keep going. What's that? No. What else? And then we also have one more. I used to be on like, three other things, but I stuck them. And then lastly, we have stomach acid, which is to. What pregnant women take? It's also fits because my some one of my levels are low and I have to take it both. Are you pork, Nate? So look, this is my final medicine pot. Cool. Okay, now I'm gonna do my meds. Um, I also take sister bond, so I take three one fifties. Mine. Do you mind? I take vitamin D three, which is basically this vitamin D for bone health. I take. See your chocolate on the side. <laughs> I take the vitamin C for immune health. Um, I take bicyprolol, fumarate 2.5, which is for blood pressure. Because I have high blood pressure, which is a side effect of transplant. I take azathioprine, which is another anti rejection drug, which is the immunosuppressant. I take omeprazole. Which is what Lucy said, yeah. and it's also basically just for indigestion, and so you don't feel sick from the other tablet. <laughs> like, that happens quite a lot with our meds. It's like a tablet, just like the other tablets. They <clears> changed <throat> it though, it used to be yellow, and now it's white, and I'm sad. Really? Mine's still, mine's still yellow. You get different, um, like, yeah. different, um, yeah. I know I had some of that, but then I got green again. Oh, it's yellow! You get different, like, types of companies. Yeah. Um, this is prednisolone, which is the steroid. Um, when I had a transplant, they weren't as bothered about. You should be off it by now. I can't. They said, but now you've had it so long, yeah. you can't. Because when I had your a body used to it. Um, they weren't so bothered about obviously taking people off for so long. But now things have changed in the nine years, obviously. Yeah. And I asked my doctor if I could come off it, but he said you can, but the risk of rejection is high. So I said I'd just stay. Probably because your body's got so used to it. Yeah. And <clears throat> that's three, six, nine, and then I have. Um, another tablet which I'm not going to put in because you're not supposed to take it out for some reason. Um, this is nifedipine, which is also for blood pressure, and I also take it to um, like widen up my like blood vessels because I had Raynaud syndrome where your hands go really numb, and that is also like an issue with immune system. So I have to take that. So now when I go outside, I don't go numb. <laughs> so then I take those. And I take also like Lucy Tacrolimus, mine's in my bedroom. Yeah. I take seven, so a five and two one. I'm obviously on a bigger amount because obviously I've just had my transplant. Well, everyone's different. Like, yeah. and, I and I'm also a lot more meds that will come off because I've only just had mine as well. I took too much tac when I first had my transplant and it scarred my kidney. 
So I, they also tried me on MMF and Sirolimus, or Sirolimus, how do you say it? <coughs> but it didn't work, so they, now they finally found it, just works. Um, I also take um, 100 milligrams, well, 100 milligrams <laughs> of trimethoprim, which is antibiotic, because I always get like recurring um, UTIs and stuff, which led to like sepsis a few years ago. That was very so, bad? Yeah, so now I take that, which um, is important. Show your pot mint. My pot of morning meds. Okay. I take them before I go to work and I take my tablets. And let's both them together. <laughs> okay. Um, so that's, that's it, really, isn't it? Um, Can you feel so true? Lucy is now going to do her eye drops just to show you what they are okay, and what they do. Yep. So, my rug. Got a cattle cabbage in there. Just some like a little change of packaging. And then just. I used to really bad. I'm really quite bad taking these. Oops, that wasn't in my eye. Okay, now we're going to talk about life before kidney transplants. Obviously, when you have cystinosis, a kidney transplant doesn't just like cure you, it just helps. It's always inevitable, also. Yeah, with one thing. So, before I had a transplant, I was on growth hormone for a year, but you can't be on growth hormone during or after the transplant, so I only actually got a year out of it. But I grew a little bit, so. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I was also on iron injections because I was anemic and iron tablet. Um, I also used to take um, potassium because um, with cystinosis the kidneys don't fill that in properly so you lose a lot of potassium in your wee. So I used to take potassium. I also used to take carnitol when I was younger That's and phosphate um, for rickets I think. Um, so those are a few things that I've come off but a lot of people say like after the transplant and how much better you feel. But personally, I obviously don't agree because with cystinosis, but if I just had kidney disease then I'd be like, what yeah. But yeah, it's not I'll like- Obviously it's probably a little bit, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and probably, I've had my kidney for nearly nine years now. It was from a deceased donor and um, I'll probably get about another five years out of it, so. For me, I was also, I had it a lot. Um, better than my sister because obviously I was diagnosed earlier but I was also on growth hormone I can't actually remember how long I was on it for can you? like was it even a year? not that long because I over I didn't want to take it like I wasn't very good at taking it yeah, but what about, so can wear that make that and I a little bit um, grew a tiny bit but I was um, I was actually quite a lot taller than she was at her age yeah um, so I also I took bone age like a nine year old yeah I also took um, EPO which was the um, for I'm really anemic as well, so I took that, and that's what caused my uh, tumour, which you saw in the, in the scar clip. If we didn't have cystinosis, we'd actually be quite tall because my mum and dad, well, mum was quite tall. So, yeah. no, so it's um, like five foot two. Yeah, I lost a year of growth when I was younger. Um, I can't remember how much I lost. And oh, oh, when I got my, when I got a bone x ray in high school, I had like the bone age of like a nine year old. I can't, I don't, I don't have one, I think. Okay. Um, I'm going to talk about my transplant and show just a little bit of um, photos from here. A little bit of photos. <laughs> this is my transplant diary. It's really bad because I never finished it, which is like just yeah, procrastination. So you expected when you were ill? Well, yeah, but I just never got around to it. Why didn't you mind? I'll just do pictures. Anyway, so this is my transplant diary. I filled this in when I was about 13, 14 years old. Um, I'm just going to give like a short story about what happened on the day because <laughs> it's funny. Um, so the date was the 23rd of May 2010, 25 past 6 in the morning, apparently. I was the there. phone rang, obviously. Um, I had to start to pack. I was really nervous, so like, I was being sick. <laughs> um, Dad drove us to Nottingham because I was in the children's clinic at the time. Lucy was in the adult clinic she went to Anna Brooks. Dad tried to kill us by overtaking two lorries. Um, was that then? Yeah. Oh my I remember I was eating hula hoops. I was training my Nike. So basically, it was the hottest day of the year. We arrived at about... 10 I think, 8 maybe, um, they put me on a drip, took some bloods and then they didn't actually come down until like 6, 8 o'clock to oh. tell us that I was a match things but when, when I was in uh, we were just sitting there for hours and hours and the surgeon or like the guys came up and started talking to us and we were like so we're having the transplant and they were like oh yeah yeah. So then basically I had the transplant and I was in the theatre for about 4 hours um, I punched someone in the face. Casual. <laughs> I was in the intensive care unit just because the high dependency unit was shut, so like I didn't really need to be in intensive care, but 
I was, and this is a picture of me when I was in intensive care. Yeah. I don't have any pictures when I was in intensive care because mum didn't take any. Yeah. So, um, I was in there for only a few days and then I went back to the ward, but I couldn't talk at first because, like, I had loads of issues with my oxygen, so they had to put me on, like, a nebulizer as well. Same. I was still for my scan. Aww. <laughs> and the nurses were, like, so nice and I, I loved all of them. There was one lady that I didn't really like, but... There's always we don't one. Talk about that. You're so different. I know. Um, obviously, I was 13 here. This was obviously when I was feeling a lot better. Um, I was in hospital for three weeks only because of how far away we were from the hospital. If we lived closer, we could come back every day for blood tests, but we didn't, so we just had to stay in for like an extra week. Then I had physio as well to help me like walk again. I walked for the first time um, after only a week, so that was really good. I remember it as well. Obviously. Has a little picture of my kidney. There. That was when I had a scan. And then there's another picture of me in, in paediatric intensive care. Mm -hmm. And that's the um, oxygen mask that blew hot air into my um, mouth because I couldn't let breathe. Actually, this is really embarrassing, but it's a picture of me with a wee pot on my head. That was a classic. <laughs> Obviously when I was feeling like a lot better. Yeah. Obviously you do that when you're just like ill. Yeah. So like, I've got a lot of like happy and also sad memories, obviously, from... Um, yeah. <laughs> There's a picture of me and my camera as well. And <laughs> the last picture is really ugly, so I'm not going to show that. But that's just basically all I've got in there. I've got a lot more pictures kind of in my box, but... You probably can't remember though, it was like 10 years ago, remember? Yeah, I can remember, I can remember. Yeah, well, compared to not me. Yeah. So, so that's my transplant diary. So now I'm going to talk about my transplant experience and my diary. I haven't got some, that many pictures, but I'll show you the pictures first. So, these... Sorry. So these are just pictures of me on the bed, really, just chilling. Because mine wasn't that traumatic. Up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is the picture of me and my mum when we were feeling better. Yeah. Okay. And then this is the picture of my scar. And then my transplant was very quick. I was in and out within a week. I went in, obviously, I had a live donor because my dad donated to me and yeah thanks for watching this video guys i hope we informed you more about cystinosis and everything if you have awareness. if you have any more suggestions on what you'd like to actually know about cystinosis or questions. any topics you'd like us to talk more about like kidney transplants or growth hormone or like just advice yeah um in a few videos i think i'm going to be talking about like tips on how to travel when you have cystinosis because i've been traveling alone now for about two years and that's kind of like a big step for me so if you want anything like that like any content like that please comment below thanks for watching hit the subscribe button to find out more about cystinosis and also the other half of my channel Wait. which is um comment like harry potter related and stuff like that so. we style harry potter also, I'm also thinking about making some kind of merchandise related to cystinosis to um, do for charity. Hopefully I'll be in some more videos. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Subscribe. Bye. 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 <laughs>